You know, the Source engine is responsible for a lot of games. Source has been Warning, the following video contains I cartoon control violence, video. references to Atlantic slave oh God, trading, the a video. subway Stand footlong, back. gunshots. Why is the video bleeding? Source has been used in some form for the entire Half-Life series, including the good one, every Counter-Strike game, Dota 2, that other one that Valve forgot, Ricochet, Dark Messiah, and if you want to get technical, Titanfall and Gearbox's cancelled KKK simulator both used a highly edited fork of Source at one point. It's a good engine, and Valve has been showing off Source 2, the sequel, said to bring technology from almost 12 to around 4 years ago into the limelight for the first time in Valve history, making it so that Source games can now almost look as good as Far Cry 5. However, when people talk about Source, you mostly hear about Valve's offerings, which makes sense, it is their engine, but you don't as often hear about games made by third parties. Maybe if you're lucky, you'll hear a lot about Black Mesa, but Black Mesa is also a remake of a Valve game. But Source is home to dozens of games not made by Valve, and almost three or four of them are even good. Beloved classics like Hunt Down the Freeman might get talked about occasionally, and they're pretty good, but none of them stand above, or below, the one. The ultimate in niche source hooliganry. The best, worst, best game ever made in the engine. Fistful of frags. Fistful of Frags is genuinely some of the most fun I've had playing a game. It was made on a budget of $13 and a half drank Sprite Cranberry, and what it became is some of the stupidest competitive fun on Earth. It's high intensity garbage, and I love it. There are two sides to Fistful of Frags. On one hand, there's genuinely well designed weapon mechanics and player abilities, and on the other side, there's a pile of seagull shit. It's an extremely weird game, clearly a budget game, but it's a passion project for the developers and the players alike, and ended up being fantastic for it. And if that's not enough, it's free. And you can even see people say the N-word every three seconds in chat. Sign here, am I right? But wait, I'm not just going to explain to you why this game is awesome and why you should play it and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, I'm on that shit now. But I'm also going to give you tips on how you can succeed at this game so that if you do try it out, you're not going in blind. And you should play it because it's awesome, it's free, your computer can run it, and TF2 is currently a discourse hellscape where people are just complaining about hats and complaining about a game mode that is, um, not in the game yet. It's just on the workshop and they have nothing better to talk about. And they didn't seem to want to respond when I repeatedly asked them why they didn't just make their own workshop submissions. And I think you guys should just come over where the grass is greener and people are actually having, like, fun. Oh yeah, and I'm sure you can all hear this right now, but uh, as you can tell, the acoustics of my uh, quote-unquote studio are very different. I have recently moved, so it's just gonna sound like this until I can fix it, and that's gonna take a lot of money and time. But you know, here, actually, let me see if I can show you guys what this looks like without doxing myself. Hold on. Alright, so as you can see, this place is quite a lot bigger than the other one. The only thing is that the neighborhood's a little bit sketchy. But, but you know, Foff is a game with weird mechanics, but that's what makes it so enjoyable. Let's start with the weapon design and shooting mechanics. As far as shooting goes, the game that Foff takes the most after is actually Counter-Strike, but the similarities are few. Basically, the more you move, the worse you shoot, simple as. And if you get hit, you slow down. That's pretty much it. To get the best accuracy, you either need to crouch or stand totally still. The game also segments players into multiple different parts. Appendages, torso, and heads. Appendage shots deal the least damage, torso shots deal medium damage, and headshots deal the most damage. Each gun has two fire modes, left click, which is usually just fire, and right click, which does something different depending on your weapon and loadout. Fistful of Frags has an extremely unique arsenal. This game takes place in 18 something or another. Because this game takes place in the 1890s, that means that there are no machine guns, no assault rifles, no plasma cannons, no iPhones, no slop shooters, none of that. And you might think that that's a bad thing, because games that have that kind of stupid bullshit usually end up being the most fun. However, Fistful of Frags transcends this potential downside, because the mechanics in this game are fantastic. 
In fact, the very first beta tester for this game, Ulysses S. Kaluka, my great-grandfather who entered the Civil War as a third party, went on record as saying, Wow, Fistful of Frags is really fun. Down with all governments, I'm not going to share a bathroom with any- Game revolves. Huh? Around 1800s guns, usually single-shot weapons that have to be manually cycled after each shot and have long reloads. This does a lot to make the shooting in FOF very interesting. You would have known that if you had watched my Hunt Showdown video, but it's fine. I'm not even mad. Go check your car. I'm, I'm really, it's not a big deal. Limiting the amount of shots you have, how quickly you can take them, and how much you have to reload makes it so accuracy matters quite a bit, and your opponents have ample opportunities to make plays against you, even if they have the worst dog shittest loadout in history. Of course, however, that works the other way around, and you too have plenty of space to fight your opponents if you catch them off guard. In FOF, you start the round off by making a loadout. This is one of two ways to get guns, not counting that guy at the docks, as some weapons are only found in the match. Here you choose your weapon, a series of abilities that are on offer, and your handle type. Lots of the weapons in FOF are quite interesting, and the slow-paced gameplay makes it so every action is important, including stuff like aiming or readying a weapon. Many of the coolest or most powerful weapons are contained in caches, found around the map, but that doesn't mean you can't make something cool from a basic loadout. In fact, some of the cooler weapons in the game are available off the jump. There's a lot of fantastic combinations, and some of the things you start off with are genuinely more powerful than the weapons you find in the chests. But when you make a loadout, you choose a starting weapon, a series of abilities that the game has on offer, and a hold. When you make a loadout, you can select a different specialization for these different fire modes. These are the hold. The different fire modes in Fistful of Frags are hip firing, fanning, and aim down sights. And last but not least, construction worker style. Different holds will specialize in different combinations of these fire modes, and sometimes they even restrict your ability to use certain ones at all. However, this can also depend on the weapon. Left-handed specialization is best at hip firing, and gives you access to the fanning alternative fire mode. It has the most accurate hip firing in the game, and left-handed is the best style in general, though it is quite close. This mostly comes down to the versatility. Being able to deliver accurate fire out to medium range when you're hip firing is really nice, and it can also be very useful to be able to fan if things get hairy or somebody tries to rush you. It helps keep close-range threats in check, like GOP fundraisers or lost dogs. This is extremely useful in a game where you are in constant chaos. It gives you the ability to adapt to many situations and deal with many threats. It gives you greater control over more situations than other styles. It's also arguably the fastest style for movement since you're mostly using the hip firing. And hip firing in FOF is basically just like using the deagle in CSGO, which is totally fine because CSGO's mechanics are a harmonic dance between movement and aim that is much more elegant than a lot of other games. For anybody who doesn't know, it's really simple. You move, you can't shoot as well. You stop moving, you can shoot better. And Fistful of Frags basically copies this system for hip firing. It's a lot of fun. In fact, I actually think that FOP has greater usage of this system than even CS. Mostly because not as many weapons one-shot, and again, because you have no automatic weapons, meaning that there's going to be a lot of situations where you miss and need to use more of your movement. There's a lot of times in CS, and I'm not the best CS player by a long margin, where people aren't constantly stutter-stepping around one another. They just kind of stop, go for the headshot or for the burst, because, you know, why wouldn't you? And then move on, but FOF isn't like that. Because, again, of the slow cycle rates, you simply just get to do more movement. It happens more often because you take more bullets to kill people, and those bullets are delivered slower. Cycling also gives you a perfect opportunity to move. Typically, when you're playing left-handed, you're going to shoot, and then try to move as fast as you can after you're done, and fire again. I genuinely think this is actually just a better usage of this system. You can't just stop moving and deliver, like, 35 shots with any accuracy. It's better to actually move, making the game generally faster. Now, you might be hearing what sounds like a stampede of human feet. Don't worry, that is just thousands of angry Polacks storming the comment section because I decided to criticize CS. However, there is nothing to fear. They usually get too distracted by the fact that the United States has things like indoor plumbing and electricity to really cause any damage. Now, the style isn't going to be for everyone, and shooting does take some getting used to, and it can be difficult at times. This is generally a high skill playstyle, but it's easily the strongest, and personally, I find it to be extremely fun. It's just constant activity between being able to balance your movement and your aim. But while this is the best playstyle, I'm still gonna need your help this Sunday to bury that thing we talked about. And it has competition, and that competition has a lot of advantages of their own. 
Next up, let's talk about fanning. Fanning specialization, well, it specializes in guess fucking what? That's right, bomb diffusal. Fanning gives you the most accurate version of the mechanic of fanning. It's much more accurate than left-handed or akimbo variants of the same thing. Your hip fire is generally worse, though not terrible. It's still quite useful. But what's more important is how much more consistent fanning becomes. Fanning in Foff is unironically better than any other game I've played with a similar mechanic, and that's because of how recoil works in this game. In a lot of games, fanning is just shooting fast with a lot of spread. Now you might be saying, hey wait, Kaluka, you know, according to your footage, that's like exactly like what this looks like. Like, you know, you're a little bit less accurate and you shoot faster and, and you know what, why don't you just shut the fuck up, okay? It's my show, stop trying to take this from me. And while you are kind of right, there are similarities between this implementation and others you might see in other games, Fistful of Frags is better, in my opinion. Now before we get ahead of ourselves, what is fanning? Fanning is basically rapid fire mode. It only works with pistols, but basically you slow down, you become less accurate, and you have much higher rate of fire. It's based on a real life technique that was first invented by Billie Eilish to try to protect herself from pedophiles. Any revolver in a game worth its salt allows you to fan. Many of you might be familiar with this from Overwatch, and I just want to let you know there is a support group that can help you recover. And in a lot of games, like I said, this just equates to faster fire rate, more spread, that's pretty much it. Usually a way to finish off an enemy or as a last resort for a close range fight. But first off, how does this exist in the context of Fistful of Frags? Is this any good? Yes, fanning is really good. The ability to overwhelm enemies with firepower is crazy. However, there are some obvious limitations. First off, your hip firing is no longer as good as it would be if you were playing left-handed style. Though it's not useless, but it is just generally not as good, and it's not really what you're here for when you pick fanning, if you understand what I mean. It's like buying a race car to drive in a school zone. It's just not why you buy that. You buy a race car to crash it into a drugstore. But it is a totally functional option. One of the major downsides of fanning is that to access your alternate fire mode, you have to take a second to ready your weapon. Obviously, if you're not conscious about this, this can be problematic. Additionally, once you're in fanning mode, you're slower. It's much like aim down sights is going to be. And also, even if this mode specializes in fanning, fanning as a concept simply isn't a very long range option. You're going to want to stick to shorter range engagements if you can. However, the ability to deliver so much firepower is genuinely very useful. And what makes fanning so cool in Foff compared to other games is how it interacts with the recoil mechanics. Recoil in Foff is not necessarily that unique. Basically, whenever you shoot, your camera deviates upwards and then in a random horizontal direction, but always a little bit upwards. And then, after a second, slowly returns to where you were aiming before you shot. Now, for most weapons, this isn't really that big of a deal, because you have to cycle for so long, typically by the time you're ready to shoot again, your camera has deviated back down to where you used to be, and you're fine. What makes this interesting though is the particular kind of shooting that Foff does. Because of the very long cycle rates for weapons, typically aim mechanics in Foff go like this. You acquire a target, which means you point at the enemy, you fire, and then because you can't shoot again, typically you take a second to move, make yourself a more dynamic target, then aim again and fire once more. Shoot, shimmy, shoot, shimmy is basically the loop here. It's a lot of cool because your opponents are constantly sidestepping, you're constantly sidestepping, and then recoil is bouncing your aim all over the place, making reacquiring your target genuinely hard and very fun. It's a lot more difficult and a lot more interesting than just pointing a crosshair at somebody and then spraying and hoping that you get a hit. Of course, this is... Is that... Is that... Flies? No. No, no, you can't do this to me, no. No, I held up my side of the bargain. No, you can't do this to me! Additionally, your quicker fire rate means that you don't have time for your aim to normalize after you take a shot and make decisions about how fast you want to fire compared to how much recoil you're willing to put up with. It takes a lot of skill, it's a constant adjustment of your positioning, your opponent's positioning, and then recoil throwing your aim off all over the place. Next up, Akimbo. Now, on the surface, Akimbo should be very powerful. I mean, after all, you have two guns. But honestly, I'm not totally sure that it is. There is the potential for Akimbo to be an extremely powerful way to play the game, but there's one problem, you need to find a second gun, and that means you need to either go buy one from a chest, or kill somebody in a specific way to go acquire a second real gun. But aside from that, Akimbo is relatively simple. You lose fanning, you lose aim down sights, but you have two guns. You basically have twice as much firepower, twice as much ammunition, and also twice as long of a reload. It is a genuinely fun way to play the game, and I'm very happy to see that both weapons are treated as separate individual things, rather than just having a weapon with twice the stats of an existing one. If you're dual wielding two cult navies, for example, you're dual wielding two cult navies. It's not one cult navy with twice as much ammo. You can operate each one independently, and you can mix and match weapons as you see fit, like Halo. And you don't even have to consult the forest mystic either, you just do it. I'm a big fan of this system, however, I do wish there were more utility items that you 
you could use in combination with a weapon. There is a healing item, but that's pretty much it. I'm not entirely sure what else you could even do, but it would be cool to at least try. And now for the final hold, right click. Now, right-handed style is easily the weakest hold in the entire game. It's nowhere near as strong as left-handed style or the horse annihilator, but it does have its own unique advantages. For one thing, it's free, so you can fit it into basically any loadout you can think of. And secondly, it's very easy, which is beneficial not only for newer players who are trying to learn the game, but also even for better players. The advantage of right-handed style is very simply that when you right-click, you get aim down sights, and when you're aim down sights, you can shoot and move at the same time. This makes it so that you don't have to manage either moving or shooting, you just have both. And also, it's very nice to have your weapons simply ready and consistently accurate all of the time. Additionally, this makes getting headshots really easy because you kind of just like walk around with your gun at head height through a building. You know, like going to the grocery store, basically. And you just get headshots by pointing wherever you're aiming. But still, this is a very simplistic style. If you're new to the game, this is probably the one you're going to be the most familiar with. And it's a great starting point, simply because it shares mechanics with basically every other shooter at this point. Though I will say that certain weapon combinations are best with right-handed style, like the Peacemaker, the Mare's Leg, and the Walker. But all of that aside, the next thing we need to talk about is abilities. So- Okay, guys, we don't have to use this transition anymore, we really don't need to- STOP IT! Abilities are where a lot of the really stupid shit comes from, and they're very easy to talk about. First off, gun throwing. Gun throwing is exactly what you think it is. You throw your gun. The upsides to this are that it deals a lot of damage, you don't need any ammo to do this, and also it's a free action. You can do it whenever you're doing anything else. So even if you're stuck reloading or something, you can still throw your gun. The downsides are of course that you throw your gun, and then you have no gun. This is problematic because Fistful of Frags takes place in America, and in America if you walk outside without some form of firearm on you, the NRA's Freedom Enforcement Agency will come and pick you up and make you go through a hand gun course. So you know you just gotta be careful of that. Next up we have heavy loads. Heavy loads is really easy, it basically allows you to just pick up bigger props. If you're running around trying to throw props at people, which is a valid strategy, you're going to need heavy loads. It's pretty much the only support you have for that kind of kit. It can be quite nice to be able to pick up some of the bigger stuff. You can use it for cover, and again, you can just throw it at people. Hitting people with a big enough prop also disarms them, which can be genuinely very strong. Next up, we have Jump Master. This one's a little bit more difficult to explain. Basically, Fistful of Rags does not have crouch jumping. Instead, it has double jumping. You can effectively bounce off of walls if you're standing near one. Combined with traditional source movement, this allows you to do a lot of really cool techniques. And Jump Master gives you a little bit of a forward boost whenever you double jump, making these techniques easier to perform and more effective. I'll be completely honest, Fistful of Frags is jank. He keeps alive with this car, it's the best and worst part of the game, and part of that jank is that the hit detection is ass. It's fine for what this is, the resources used to make this game were limited, but it isn't amazing, and Jump Master takes advantage of this quite well. On the downside, there are going to be a lot of frustrating situations where somebody who's good at this is basically just going to dodge bullets, in a way that probably shouldn't be happening. On the upside, it does give you an actual benefit to learning how to use the movement of the game. Knives, and this includes all melee weapons by the way, are very good in Fistful of Frags. They're not the strongest playstyle, I mean after all it is a melee weapon in a game where everybody has gun, but they're cooler than a a lot of other games. They're a lot of fun, and again, they're very skillful. First off, they're just very utilitarian. You run faster when you have a melee weapon out, kind of like taking out your knife in CS, and therefore melee weapons can function sort of as a kind of sprint or movement mechanic, meaning that there is always a good reason to keep one around if you happen to have the space for it. And of course, also they are weapons after all, they can headshot, though I will say the melee hit detection is really bad. I don't know if this is just a thing Source Engine does in general, but there are times where you will be like, like licking the beard hairs of your opponent and still not hit them and also you can throw them. This is actually really fun and also really useful because obviously these don't have any real ammo, though technically you do lose the weapon and therefore don't need to be reloaded, this is a very great way to end out a fight or start one. Since it's a projectile and therefore travels through space somewhat slowly, you can use it to kind of pre-fire around corners, either to start an engagement or try to hit somebody that you don't want to actually peek. And also it's just, it's like cool. They're very limited in range and they're somewhat hard to use, which is again, kind of a good thing. Next up we have Brass Knuckles. Brass Knuckles are basically an upgrade for your fist weapon, which is like your last ditch effort kind of weapon. And they make it so that it deals greatly increased damage and also, if you hit somebody in the head while they're facing you, you can disarm them. This is really annoying, and you can do really stupid shit with it, like punch somebody in the face and then take their gun. And if you do this, you're probably one of those deep state hyperborean spies the Rockefellers keep sending after me. Or you're just doing it because you think it's fun, it's literally 50-50. 
All right, hold on everybody, I was wrong. So it turns out you don't just need to punch people with the fists. Uh, when I recorded that, I was basically asleep and didn't really know what I was talking about. You actually need to use the right click attack to disarm somebody. So let's go over this one more time. What do you gotta do? Press right. To do what mechanic? Stop Pokemon. That's right. And next up we have sliding. Sliding in Fistful of Frags is really good. For one thing, it allows you to move and gives you crouching accuracy, meaning you can move and shoot very well. Additionally, you can use sliding to boost off of inclines or little jumps. Basically, any little ledges or ridges you can find will give you a huge boost. And once again, this can go into almost any loadout. It's very useful. Not in every situation, but there are a lot of times, especially if you're using a shotgun or a Kimbo, where being able to slide right up to somebody and deliver a lethal blow is very useful. And it can also just be useful to make yourself smaller all of a sudden in a regular fight. The only thing, though, is that this, uh, this will not protect you from Herobrine. What was that? Next up, we have Boots, and Boots is probably the strongest of all of the abilities. It's an upgrade to the kicking mechanic, and kicking is one of the most paramount mechanics in Fistful of Frags. You're going to need to learn how to use it to succeed, and you will be doing it a lot. It's like learning that if you order a two-piece animal style, you get invited to the secret dogfighting ring underneath of every Zaxby's. It just really enhances the experience, and is a paramount mechanic for any close-range engagement. It is well-made, too, like all things in this game. Kicking pushes any enemies back, and yes, that means you can push them off the map, like Pyro TF2, Pyro TF2, 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 TF2. It kind of stuns them in a way that I can't really explain, it just kind of makes it so people can't really shoot you. Though when you get kicked, it looks like you should be able to, it doesn't really convey this information very well. And it deals a bit of damage. It has a really cool downside, too. Whenever you kick, you can't move. So missing a kick has potentially disastrous consequences. It's a really cool back and forth. The only issue is that the registration for what counts as a successful kick is fucking garbage. And there's gonna be times where kicks that you do that look like they should hit without question will miss, and kicks that are like 20 feet away from you will hit. It's something that genuinely holds this mechanic back from being really good. It's, it's one of those things I see this game and I'm like, man, I wish I could remake this game so that this mechanic worked correctly. For the most part, again, it's okay, but there's definitely a lot of times, like at least once in a match, where a kick just doesn't look correct. It's very unfortunate, but the mechanic itself is really cool. And Boots is extremely powerful because it means that your kick does 35 damage instead of 25. This is a very big distinction. It doesn't sound like a lot because it's only 10 damage, but this hits a damage threshold where a a lot of weapons can one-shot either with a headshot or body shot, and then kick to get a kill. And kicking is often faster than cycling your gun, meaning that you get access to a powerful combo that you don't get without boots. Boots fits on literally every build, literally all of them. Even longer range sniper builds benefit from boots, because if you body shot with every rifle that isn't the sniper rifle, you deal enough damage for boots to finish them off. Next up we have the Derringer. It's terrible, don't take it. And finally, a single stick of dynamite. It's terrible, don't take it. And now we have the guns. Now as much as I would like to go over every single gun in Fistful of Frags, and I totally could, I don't think that's necessary, so I'm just going to highlight all of the major different weapon types and the weapons that I think showcase this game's design the best. First off, the Smith Carbine. The Smith Carbine is the only rifle in the game that you can spawn with. Once again, weapons are either acquired in chests or as a part of your loadout. The rifles in Fistful of Frags are one of the most varied weapon types in the entire game, but they all share universal mechanics. You can't hip fire them, so you have to aim down sights, and obviously doing so puts a giant thing of iron sights in your way, and also they have the best damage over distance, and generally higher damage than shotguns or revolvers, including the ability to one-shot with a headshot even out to like a medium range. And the Smith Carbine distills this down into its most basic parts. The Smith has one shot. You have to reload after every single round. The reload isn't too bad compared to other guns, but it's more reloading than any revolver or shotgun is going to have to do. But what you get out of it is more range than anybody else who isn't using a bow, a huge heaping of damage, and also just a large reward for accuracy. If you can hit headshots, you can use this thing at almost any range, though obviously you do have the downside of not being able to put out as many bullets as your opponents, and it gives you the ability to hit kills from further out than any revolver can. It's an extremely skillful weapon, one that forces you to learn how to get headshots and to be able to do them consistently so you can keep up with the revolvers. It's incredible fun, however, by only talking about the Smith Carbine, I'm not doing enough justice to all of the other rifles, and also not doing enough justice in general to the arsenal, because there's something about every weapon in this game. Even just between two different rifles, there is a very distinct set of use cases and identity. Every weapon is doing something to be interesting for some reason. For example, the Smith Carbine, the weapon we just talked 
talked about. This is a very hardline weapon. You have one shot and you can get one kill before you have to defend yourself. But there's also rifles like the Yellow Boy. The Yellow Boy cannot get a one-shot headshot. It is in fact the only rifle that can't. And it has like a thousand round magazine and it shoots really fast. Meaning that you don't get that kind of extreme damage like you get with the Smith or any of the other rifles, but it's just a really good crowd controlled weapon. It just constantly fires. You can seriously let it rain on all number of different threats. It's a much softer weapon, much more lenient on your aim and you can only ever get two shots, but that's the thing about Fistful of Frags. All of the weapons are like this. Different little properties help give these weapons their uniqueness, and it's done very well. For example, of the revolvers. There are many different revolvers in this game, and these are your workhorse weapons. You're going to use these for everything, especially storming the Scottish Parliament in 2024. And these weapons are all very good at different things. For example, the Volcanic, the Army, and the Mare's Leg. These are basically three different vectors of extremeness for this game. The Army is a strong, high damage, accurate weapon. The Mare's Leg is an extremely powerful, but often not very accurate and sometimes inconsistent weapon, and the Volcanic does the least damage out of all of these guns by quite a bit, sometimes taking an additional two shots to get a kill, but is much faster and has a much bigger magazine. These differences are what make something like the Army, because of its high damage and its ability to consistently hit shots because of its high accuracy, and consistently get two shot kills, or something like the Volcanic, which can't really do either of those two things because it's not especially accurate and has very low damage for all of the weapons in this game, but cycles super fast and combos well with left-handed style, allowing you more opportunities to move around, making yourself a faster, harder to hit target, or something like the Mare's Leg, which is a gun that can one-shot if you have a close-range headshot and can be explosively powerful, but is extremely inaccurate in most situations and is sometimes just extremely inconsistent and not capable of being something that you can rely on. These are very different weapons. One of them is like a fast cricket gun that makes you more dexterous that's only really good for certain holes. One of them is just a hand cannon that you have to shove into people's mouths, and the other one is a firm baseboard to base a loadout off of. It's insane how well done these guns are, and I could talk about every single revolver and tell you exactly what they're good for, and they're all good for different things for different reasons, and not in a way that is like totally artificial or something that you can just ignore and still find success with. You can succeed with any of these guns, but the differences in this game aren't just like incredibly minute things that overall don't really change how you play. These guns are truly unique. They have a lot of different details, a lot of different little things you need to know about them to use them effectively, and that goes for all the classes of weapons in the game. Even shotguns, something that is like an FPS masterclass at this point. We've been doing shotguns since Doom, and we've been doing them the same way since Doom. The coach gun is a giant noob tube that deals an insane amount of damage, but lacks the ability to effectively deal with crowds unless you can find a spot to reload in because you only have two shots. The Sawnoff is an extremely inconsistent starter, but an MVP sidearm, and when dual wielded, it's nuts! The pump action can basically just solo the entire server due to its ease of use and high fire rate. These differentiations are the core of what make Foth Foth, and when you combine these incredibly distinct weapon identities with one another, or the other abilities and mechanics of the game, and Fistful of Frags' willingness to just let cool shit happen just cause it's cool, like throwing knives or chucking infinite dynamite at people, or letting you kick people off the map, or, well, you know, there is a fourth example, but I just don't, uh, I don't know if you guys are scurvy enough dogs to hear that, you know, uh, no offense, but you all kinda look like, uh, some swabbies right now. You create this incredibly interesting and healthy gameplay ecosystem that never gets boring. No matter how long I keep working on this video, I still procrastinate making it to go play the game under the guise that I need more footage when I have 300 gigabytes of it and have barely used 70 because it's just so much fucking fun. If you haven't at least tried this game out, you are genuinely doing yourself a disservice and you should download it now. Trust me, you'll find me out there. You and I will duel in this game because it's that much fun and I cannot stop playing it and I have a feeling many of you won't be able to either. The fact that this is just free and was made by a bunch of amateur game devs for no reason other than to just be fun is proof that we need to sabotage logging companies and is just insane. The fun factor to investment ratio is literally infinite and not just because the game doesn't cost money. It's because it's really fucking good. Oh, and of course the maps. Now the, the top.